The Gospel According to Mark, Chapter 1 Allow me a short introduction. To understand the story of Jesus, one should understand the process of storytelling. Go read a thousand books and you will see that the story is always somehow about us, or the people of another time and how someone managed to accomplish something out of the normal to become material for a story to tell others, to show them how it was done and perhaps to show how it can be done. Usually, in the case of historic or religious writings, men sit down with an objective to, to promote their way of thinking. Jesus is a character in a story. He or someone like him was likely real, and there have been many and will be many more very much like him. Though not all would agree, Charles Darwin, Friedrich Nietzsche, and Galileo, Copernicus, were all poking at the same thing. Our ancestors did not know everything. So instead of worship, worshiping them, we must learn to embrace change and evolution. If something in a book sounds impossible, it might be just that. Let it slide. It's inevitable when every, even people in the same age try to report events. What matters in the Jesus Christ story is the rejection of the laws of Moses and some ideas what direction to go. Okay. Mark starts with John the Baptist promoting the Forget Your Sins campaign. People went for it. Bob Marley sings the same thing. If you know what life is worth, you will look for yours on earth. That is what John and Jesus want to make clear. Man, we have it here. Don't wait for the nonsense they promise you for your death. John tells them Jesus is the man with the Holy Spirit. Or another way to say it, an angel. And just a reminder for those who have just joined us, on earth, angels don't have wings. They are the us trying to become, our future trying to pull us through with an idea. After John got the crowd's attention to his Duncan People in the Water show, Jesus dropped in. After the formalities to honor Jesus before the crowd, John dropped Jesus in the river and Jesus jumped up and saw a pigeon. White, of course, important for imagery. And Jesus followed the bird into the desert, tempted by the devil. Mark gives no details, but something else is real here. Angels came to help him, protect him from wild animals in the desert. It sounds a little more like a camping trip. Angels were friends. People don't really go 40 days in the desert without food, unless they want to die. Jesus went on back to his hometown. Like Matt said, teaching with authority, something new, the scribes didn't. Then some guy runs in screaming, Jesus Christ, I know who you are, you are God's messenger. The guy flipped out about until Jesus said, thanks, that's enough. Wow, he told the madman to chill and he did. An amazing event. The word spread fast. Have you heard about the Messiah guy? Yeah, he told my kid to stop crying and it did. My hand works again. I was blind and now I see. So they went to Simeon's mother-in-law's house. She jumped up out of bed and gave them something to eat. All the possessed people came to see Jesus and got depossessed. Demons suddenly homeless. When the crowd got out of control in his hometown, Jesus took his buddies and went to the next town, preaching in the synagogues of all places and driving out demons. Then the guy who is unclean gets cleaned with Jesus then runs from town to town telling the good news. So to get away from the crowded towns, he went out in the fields and preached and healed there.